Alright, I've been waiting to get this gun. I know that GNG is very proud of this release, and I couldn't be happier with GNG right now since, well, they sent one to me, as well as their new L85. I know these sold long ago, but there's something inside this one that makes it way better than the old ones. But anyways, let's get into this review. This is the new GNG TR16 MBR 308 WH. Yes, a 308 AR rifle, with the name AR in quotations because to some people calling this an M4 is wrong and calling it an AR is wrong to other people on the other side of the argument. <laughs> Everyone's a freaking critic. I don't know why, but I love GNG. I've got a few of their guns in my collection like the FNC, my M14s, and more, but the MBR, although modern, still gives off a bit of classiness. The build quality, the controls, and the range is all good, but we'll get to that in a bit. But I do want to thank GNG for sending me this to review. I'll be adding links for the MBR series and the L85 that I just showed off in the description, so if you end up liking this rifle or the L85, then you can go and order one for yourself. But I do know that the MBR goes for a pretty penny on Airsoft GI's website, so let's see if this rifle is worth it, starting where we always begin with the unboxing. This begins with the common GNG box that most of us are used to seeing. However, if you read the features listed under the graphic of the MBR, you will see that this rifle comes with a lot of goodies like a MOSFET, an ETU, and the new G2 gearbox that GNG is really proud of. This gearbox design is a hot topic at GNG, and we'll get into it later in this review. Opening the box up, we can see everything that this package comes with, all laid out in a styrofoam tray. First up, we get what I thought was an old wall charger that I would say that you should just throw out once you get the box open, but it was actually a nice surprise to see that this is actually a simple smart charger instead. It's nothing special, but it's nice to have nonetheless, and it should work fine with the included 9.6 volt nickel metal hydride battery. I'll admit that I was surprised to see this included in the box since this is a more high-end gun at about $400. That's not a bad thing, just odd to see. Moving along, we get a cleaning slash and jamming rod, as you would expect, with this low capacity 40 round magazine sitting above it. This magazine is actually really nice and bears some cool features by itself, so we'll come back to this magazine as well as the high caps that I also got sent to me with this package from G&G. Next up, the paperwork includes a product warranty card, a small catalog of a variety of G&G products that you could go through, and a manual that will cover the basics of the MBR. It's nothing too in-depth, just a simple manual that repeats in multiple languages. Then to finally finish up this unboxing, we get the GNG 308 MBR rifle with an old school tube and rod speed loader underneath it. This will actually be great to use for that 40 round magazine, since you can just fill this up and with one go, you can fill the magazine and be on your way. And that's it, we're done with the unboxing, so we can move along with the MBR rifle to see its features, its flaws if we can find any, and what ultimately makes it different from the other options on the market. And we begin this at the end of the barrel with the plastic amplifier slash flash hider. Now my opinions on this amplifier might not mean anything to you, but this amp feels a little bit out of place to me. On a lot of other GNGs, an amp like this would be alright, but I mean you wouldn't expect something like this on something like an M14 or an FAL, right? I'd probably just replace this with something else, since underneath we get 14mm counterclockwise threads, but at least it doesn't feel cheap. It also adds a bit of character and sound to this gun whenever you shoot it, so that's good too. The inner barrel, as you would assume, is pretty long at about 400mm, and the key mod rail is also pretty long, meaning you got a lot of real estate for all sorts of attachments. Despite being made for metal though, it's pretty light, and that might be partly in thanks to the cutouts made on each tooth of the Picatinny rail on top. Since there's a lot of points on this rail, you get a bit of saved weight thanks to all the removal of all that material. So that's a pretty cool trait on this rifle as well. Up top on the rail right out of the box, the MBR comes with these metal flip up iron sights. I've seen these iron sights on a few other G&G rifles and they're pretty simple to work with. You get a fully adjustable peephole rear sight and a front sight that's only adjustable for elevation. There's not much more to really say here besides that they can be flipped up or down without having to push in any buttons or that they can be replaced with whatever you'd like to add to the top rail as long as you have a flathead screwdriver nearby. Continuing along to the rear of the rifle, we have a pretty standard buffer tube and a G&G styled crane stock with a double sided sling point connected. The stock itself is the same one used on many G&G combat machines, and it features quite a bit, including a small compartment that can be easily used for PEC box batteries. There's also an adjustment point lock so you can really set your stock to wherever you want it on the buffer tube, and then we get a nicely rubber padded butt pad. 
This stock is all around another proven design by G&G, and I quite like them. However, after pushing this button in and swinging the butt pad to the side, the wires inside will come with a small type to me a connection connected to Dean's wires with a MOSFET connected just behind that. We do have quite a bit going on in here, but the MOSFET does some good work, besides allowing you to change the full auto selection into three round burst. You can do this by holding the trigger down on semi until you hear the MOSFET chirp, and bam, you've changed the selection on your gun. Another trick it can pull off is not allowing you to use a dying battery. The gun simply won't allow itself to be powered if it senses a dying battery, and it'll beep loudly until you unplug that battery. I would really advise to use a charged battery with the MBR, unless you wish to risk this beeping to alarm enemies where you are on the field, or even worse, when you're flanking behind them. As for battery storage, I found the wires to be a bit annoying to work with, since it feels like there's more wires in here than in previous G&G rifles that I've reviewed, but with a little bit of playing around you'll get the hang of it, especially if you have smaller LiPo batteries. So that's the rear of the MBR wrapped up, and the front covered, so now we'll take a look at the metal receivers and the fully ambidextrous controls. The magazine releases, the selector switches, the charging handle, and even the bolt releases are ambied as well as functioning. A locking bolt and working releases are always nice to see because it just makes adjustments to your rotary style hop ups just a bit easier, so for controls the 308 MBR gets my approval. I did like the extra large magazine release on the right side, but it had to be tightened down once I pulled it out of the box because it was just wobbling all over the place. It wasn't tightened down at all, but that was a pretty simple fix so it's not much to talk about. And I thought the 90 degree selector switches were a cool addition. Just please get used to the selector switches if you do plan on getting this rifle because you just might end up like me as I accidentally blasted two enemy players with three round bursts when I thought I was on semi. Needless to say, they were pretty pissed off that I shot them with three round bursts in their backs that weren't covered with any gear at about 50 feet away. But I made sure to apologize when I got the chance to. Next I want to show you a really cool feature about the 308 MBR that's easier to show you with a low cap magazine. Yes, the extended follower is cool because it ensures you feed every last BB into the gun, but it's when it runs dry when the rifle really shows you what's different about it. Because you can not dry fire this gun. This is something that divided a few different players who I showed this rifle off to. Some people liked it, and some people were really annoyed by this. When the magazine runs out, you can't fire the rifle. It's that simple, and there's no way to trick the rifle into dry firing unless you reach up into the mag well and push back on this bar. This is what's pressed down when a magazine with BBs is placed into the mag well, and if you really need to, this is the only way you can dry fire, preferably to make sure that the gun is empty after a game. I for one like this feature, despite it completely screwing me from getting a easy 5 man kill when I first took this rifle out to play with. That was my fault for not switching out magazines, and I paid for it with a heavy stream of LMG fire to my legs. Pretty close up. Just a bit more realism for you Milsim players out there. The included magazine is also pretty good looking in my opinion, with the faux rounds and the clear polymer body. This low cap fed pretty well, even with the MBR's high rate of fire with the 11.1 Titan battery, unlike how the high caps performed. But I guess it's understandable since normal high caps tend to do a bit poorly with 20 rounds a second ROFs and over. As for the flat metal trigger and the motor grip, well the trigger is flat out awesome, no pun intended, thanks to the ETU and MOSFET. And me being able to do this is proof on how short the trigger reset is. It's kind of hard to do it, but... And the grip is still comfortable like it is on other combat machines that use this same grip. These are a couple parts that are pulled right from the G&G parts bin like an old GM vehicle like the original Dodge Vipers, but that doesn't mean that these parts lack in any way. They were reused for a good reason. So I've covered the solid metal receiver, the rail up front, and the rear of the gun, but what's inside the MBR that really makes it tick? Welcome to the G2 Gearbox. This gearbox features a quick spring change system, double o-ring air nozzle, a 50% thicker padded cylinder head than what was found in the original or previous version 2 gearboxes, the redesigned bevel gear engagements for higher performance, lower power consumptions, and to reduce heat in the gears, and a smaller MOSFET to make room in the buffer tube for batteries. This MOSFET also features that beeping I mentioned earlier to signal a dead battery. All this makes for a super quick trigger rifle that in practice should last longer in harsher games, and in my own experience over the course of owning this rifle for about a month, 
I'd say that's about true. I really do love the trigger responses of this gun, and the MOSFET chirp is pretty handy so I don't burn out a battery. Even with all this though, what is it chrono at? Well, it fires at just about what you probably think it would for a rifle like this, somewhere in the 370s if not the low 380s with 0.2 gram BBs. I mean, you could just dumb this down for CQB if you got another spring available, but this is clearly a long range field rifle. The rate of fire with the Lampo 1 Titan battery is also pretty good at about 20 to 23 rounds a second. So it definitely wouldn't take too long to end that 40 round magazine with the right battery inside. Then at range with 0.32 gram biodegradable GNG BBs, this rifle is doing great at 150 feet, even with a slight crosswind. But then with 0.28 gram BBs, this rifle acted up quite a bit at the same distance, sending BBs left and right. Maybe the barrel length and the FPS output didn't work well 0.28 gram BBs, but I'm not sure. I found this out earlier and almost used 0.32 gram BBs exclusively then after. So the 308 MBR can perform at range, its rate of fire is pretty good and the FPS is pretty consistent. So what would I change about this rifle if I had the power? Well, the MBR can be had with a different muzzle device, so that's nice. An MBR with maybe an M-Lock rail or even a standard pick rail would be cool. Or even a stubby 308, that would be really nice. I would really like to see some extended 308 magazines with that stubby dream rifle as well. Uh, I really don't know, this rifle is pretty solid the way it is right now. I don't want to make it sound like this rifle can't get any better, but it feels like a high-end gun. It feels like it's worth its price. Maybe this is someone's next DMR project, or maybe someone will extensively mod one of these out into a CQB beast. I'm sure it will happen sooner or later. I mean, after all, this is GNG we're talking about. One of the greatest airsoft companies that's been around for like 30 plus years. People love modding these out, and a good old combat machine can last forever. I'm just hoping I didn't miss anything important in this review. But if I did, then just ask your questions down below in the comments of this video, and I'll try to answer as many of them as possible. And I'm sure that GNG will be looking at those comments as well. I would like to thank everyone at GNG who supports these kinds of videos and for making this review possible. I'd also like to thank you all for watching and for your support with all your likes, shares, and subscriptions. Trust me, when I break like 500 or even 1,000 likes, these videos get a lot of views really fast, and I greatly appreciate all that help. But be sure to check out the description for links to Airsoft GI, where you can find this rifle and so much more that I featured in this review. Now I have some shooting clips for you guys to enjoy, as well as some gameplay from High Ground Airsoft to put together, so I better get to work on that before I put together the next review over the GNG L85A1. But until the next video drops from the city of San Antonio, this has been Scott Hollenbeck and I will be sure to see you all next time. said you can change the selections on the selector switch because of the ETU inside. So right now I have it set to semi and three round burst. So semi, three round burst. Now if I want to change it to semi full auto, all we have to do is keep it on semi, pull the trigger once, do it in a safe direction, and then we hold the trigger down and then soon we'll hear a beep. There's the beep. So now it changed three round burst back to full auto. Like so. Remember, when there's no BBs in the magazine, the gun will not shoot and there's no way to really trick it. So you'll have to remove the magazine and reload before it'll shoot again. Or if you really need to, put your finger up in the mag wheel, push on the lever, and then that's the only way I've found to make it shoot. Without, of course, ammo in the magazine.